Hi, I'm Steven, a program manager on the App Service team. In this video, I'm going to show you what's new in App Service Logic Apps. I'll first talk about some recent additions, and then cover some things that are coming soon. If you're not familiar with Logic Apps, they're a great way to automate common tasks. We have a simple, web-based designer that allows you to create reliable processes without having to write a single line of code. We have a rich set of SaaS connectors that mean you can integrate with the most popular services out there, from Azure services to social to on-premise databases. I'm not going to cover the introduction to Logic Apps here, but you can check out our session this past year at Ignite. First, some of the recent additions this past summer and fall. We have six areas we've been focusing on. First, making it easier to get started. Second, improving debugging and control. Third, key integration features. Fourth, better content handling. Fifth, increased connectivity. And finally, better administration. To make it easier to get started, we have added a set of templates. These templates contain pre-wired triggers and actions, so all you have to do is provide your unique app config. You can now search the API app gallery to make it easier to find the functionality that you need, and we've also added many more tooltips, so you can see exactly what all the inputs and outputs are. To improve debugging, we've added trigger history, which allows you to see every time that a recurring trigger has run. For these, we show the full inputs and outputs, along with the correlation ID for you to look for in your logs. To give you more control, we've added customizable retry policies, so you can define exactly how many times the Logic App will call your backend service. We've also added the ability to override the async behavior if you want to fire and forget. To bring key integration features to you, you can now use control flow concepts like do until, which allows you to repeat an individual action until a condition is met. There is a new wait action that can wait for a certain amount of time or until a future date. To improve business insights, we will be integrating with Power BI so you can build your own business activity dashboard. And we have a trigger message splitter where I can take an array of items and kick off a run for each of these instances. To improve content handling, we allow you to flow binary content between APIs. If you get a binary blob from storage, for example, you can send that to Dropbox. In addition, we have better parsing of JSON strings. So when you get that blob from Azure Storage, if it's JSON, you can get particular properties out from the inside of it. We've added 14 different connectors, 11 in a GitHub community repository that anybody can contribute to. To improve the administration of Logic Apps, we've added the ability to rename or move Logic Apps. You can schedule Logic Apps to run in the future, and we've added manual triggers. Finally, we also created a .NET SDK that allows you to programmatically manage Logic Apps rather than having go to the REST API. Let's take a look at what we've done. So I'm first going to show you a Power BI dashboard that's pulling in data from Logic Apps. So this is a dashboard that I've set up beforehand, and you can see here all of the different parts and telemetry that we're going to collect. For example, the duration of the Logic App, how many actions are executed, and any failures. So I've built a quick little app that will actually kick off pushing the data right into my Logic app. So that'll get started, and this will start collecting all of those runs. And you can now see here in the dashboard, this will start lighting up with the data. And you can see the individual actions that are executing, and even the map and all the graphs, this is updating live. So this is a great way to get business insights from Logic Apps as it runs. So what's coming up next? First, webhooks will give Logic Apps the ability to receive callbacks from other services. We will include validating the schema for these incoming requests. We will also have a static endpoint, so that way the request URL doesn't change if you move the Logic App across resource groups or subscriptions. Finally, we will allow the webhook to be in the middle of a workflow, which means that you can pause the workflow while it's waiting for a request from the outside service. Second, you may have heard about the improvements for hosting APIs in App Service. The Logic Apps Designer will be adding support for any API endpoints that have Swagger. This means you can build your web APIs with any technology, but of course, it's best with App Service API apps and EasyAuth. We will also be adding API management capabilities for the APIs that you use from Logic Apps. We will be releasing the latest version of API apps this quarter, and then coming in early 2016, we'll have the new features that I just talked about, including the ability to use the Logic App Designer with them. Let's take a look. So this is the Logic Apps Designer that will be able to call into the new API apps. 
I'm gonna create a logic app that goes to Twitter and gets back tweets from Azure. And then I'm going to add an action from a custom API that I built. I can come here and I can search across all of the APIs that are available, including my own APIs. So let's say I work at Contoso. So I built this API. And then what I did is I just exposed the swagger for the API and pulled it in. The swagger contains, for example, the name of this field. Then I can flow data into this API uh, from the tweet step, for example. It's that easy. Of course, with the Logic Apps Designer, I can add in steps to other SaaS services, such as Office 365. So here, I'm going to search for send email, let's say, and that will go out and find, again, the swagger for the send email action and pull in the input fields for that. As I fill out this action, you can see again that I can not only reference the data from the Twitter step, but also from my own custom API, the product list, I built that and I can reference that as well. The last great thing that we're working on is this idea of tokens inside of the designer. So you can see as I click on each of these tokens, it's building an email message for me. And each token represents the placeholder of that content that will come in when this Logic App finally runs. And these tokens can, of course, come from the SaaS APIs and from the API that I built myself. So I'll just click on that, and that's it. If you'd like to see more frequent updates about Logic Apps, go to aka.ms slash Logic Apps Live, where we do video sessions each month about what's coming up. Online, you can try App Service for free today or follow me on Twitter. Thanks for watching.